Alright, I'm an idiot and I realized last episode that I didn't mark off the entire ring. So, doing that now. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Panda and welcome back to Final Fantasy 13. In the last episode, we did quite a bit more grinding and upgraded every single one of our weapons to a star. Uh, minus the couple that we acquired. We also upgraded our Crystarium and now every single character can use any role that they would like. Also, we defeated Barthandalus and he t teleported us to somewhere quite weird called the Fifth Arc. And in this episode, we will try to go through and finish that Fifth Arc and complete Chapter 10. So, let's get going. Easy, guys. It's all right. Reigns is a sanctum officer. He's been helping us uh, out. Why are you here? <sighs> Reigns! You traitor! <laughs> I put you on the path. That was my focus. <laughs> You're a C? Since long before we met. I did my best to assist you, as bid by the Sanctum Falci. Now do you understand? The Falci have watched over you, guiding your every step. The luck that saved you time and again was a deliberate machination. Why, you may ask? The Primarch, or should I say, Bartandalus, is crafting you into the instruments of Cocoon's demise. We've been played for fools. A Cocoon foul sea? Why? Why? To restore the Maker. The Maker? The entity responsible for creating both humans and Falci. Long ago, the Maker departed this world, leaving the two races behind. In a sense, human and Falci are brothers, orphaned by the same parent. As for the humans, they forgot the order imposed by the Maker. They began to war amongst themselves for the first time in history. The Falci focused on recalling their lost deity and returning the world to its former glory. This purpose lies at the heart of all their actions. Calling back the Maker requires a fitting sacrifice. Yeah, we've heard. The destruction of Cocoon. The lives of this world's entire populace. In bloody tribute. <clears throat> no. That's crazy talk. I don't get it. Why do they need us? Couldn't the Fauci end Cocoon with just a thought? Their existence is bound to the creation and maintenance of this floating shell. It is their very nature that holds them in check. You mean, Cocoon Falci can't destroy Cocoon? They needed tools. If we can stop this by doing nothing... We'll do nothing. Noble, I expected as much. You lied to us. What happened to your dream of rebuilding Cocoon for the people? Was it all a lie? A shadow of a dream from when I was human. It was change I craved, and once I'd built the influence to make things happen, there was change. I gained all the power I could hope for, but was a puppet with no will to wield it. It wasn't the foul sea who changed. It was me. You... you were made a Lassie? A Lassie. Tied to an inescapable focus, a slave of destiny. 
I'd lost hope. I'd all but given up on dreams of freedom. What are you saying? I'm here of my own accord, not by foul sea order. Seeing you fight brought it all back. Brought back that future I once strove for. I too will challenge my fate. Easy, guys. If I can defeat you here, the Falsi plan will fail. Reigns! I will use all my remaining power. I will set you free! Alright. I seem to have a knack for ending episodes right before a boss fight. So this is Sid Reigns. Uh, this was a tough fight when I fought him first, like the first playthrough, and then the second playthrough was a breeze. So we'll see how we do this time. I did use uh, Lightning, Vanille, and Hope when I fought him every time. Well, I got, that was my party for both playthroughs. So obviously things are different now and having Fang and Lightning are it's so different and it's a lot easier because Fang is uh, quite a good commando especially now that she has a higher ATB gauge so yeah I'm doing quite well he's not doing much damage to me at all So it seems we can't do magic. Take down the enemy. Yeah, uh, Fang is a pretty good saboteur. I hate that interrupting attack though. That's the most annoying thing in the world. Alright. So once we get a stagger off, I think that should be the battle. Yeah, he looks pretty disgusting after he uh, transformed, and now he has wings, so even more disgusting. And that was a crazy how good that stagger was, it interrupted whatever the fuck he was about to do. Yeah, this should be the fight, especially since I can launch him. Yeah, look how much damage Fang is doing. This is a uh, this is TKO. Next round, and that should be that. Holy crap! Look at that! I I destroyed it. It was two minutes. I beat him in two minutes, and his target time was six minutes. focus? I don't think so. All Reigns did was try to save Cocoon in his own way. His own way. What? Hey! Where are you? Snow! I think Reigns was searching. Searching for a way to make us understand. To understand the frustration of being a lassie. 
a Lassie bound to a focus, and maybe what it meant to be human. Alright, so that's a hell of a start to an episode, uh, but unfortunately that's going to die down a bit because I know it's coming up and there's a certain point that I want to get to 100% in this episode and I don't know how long it's going to take. I do know that there is no, there is nothing eventful up until that point and I'm probably going to be cutting a lot of it out. Like for instance, that bomb fight and that pointless elevator ride. Yeah, I'm getting pretty excited because after this, no more linearity. It's just nothing but open world and it's gonna be awesome and I can't wait. I might cut out these areas too because I fucking hate these areas. I, I don't know why. There's like these ledges you can go on and there are no items there. They're just pointless and it's stupid. Yep, so I just scoured the whole area. There was absolutely nothing. There was one out of the fight, not a single item. And it took me like five minutes to go around the whole place, making sure I didn't miss an item. Because I, I'm a slut for the items. I fucking need to get all the items. But there's nothing here. And I remember these rooms with the fights in them too, that they didn't have any because items either. This is why, just this chapter, I, I never liked it. And I know all the previous chapters were linear as well, but at least they were aesthetically pleasing. Like the enemies kept getting different, like visually it was magnificent. Here it's just kind of dark and gloomy and the areas are on repeat, they all look the same. And all the enemies are the same too. And thanks to the comedic timing when you record, here's a new enemy, just as I fucking say that. Anyway, there was a thread I looked at uh, a couple years after this game came out about this enemy, this dancing one. And apparently it was racist to like native people or something. And it's like, it's so weird because it, it looked like it could be from any sort of race. And obviously it's a fucking alien race or whatever the fuck it is. So I don't know, I found that kind of weird. It's like a dancing bird thing. Like how can you pin that to any sort of race? It could be any. And now that I think of it, Saz was actually kind of racist apparently. Like, he acted too much like a black guy, and this bird being in an afro and shit like that. Like, I never understood it. People are just looking into it too much. Like, every culture acts differently. Like, you need to act some in some sort of manner. I might be going too deep down the rabbit hole. Either way, like, they have to make a personality for all these characters, and... Well, I mean, I think they did a pretty good job. Like, aesthetically, like, these characters are awesome. And well, now I'm going to sound like I'm sucking up the black people, but Saz is my favorite character by far. He is like super funny and such a lovable character. You know two characters that did not get enough screen time? Jill and Lebro. Take a guess down in the comments as to why. And we get another weapon for snow. Yeah, this is what it boils down to pretty much. Like when an area is so boring that I end up talking about stupid threads on the internet. Well, might as well show something interesting instead of me babbling on about nothing. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I leveled up to Crystarium and by a lot. And that was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Holy shit. Anyhow, the Crystarium was expanded by a whole shit ton. And I basically leveled up the way I would at the beginning of the game. Just the character's main role. And that took up a lot. Uh, I didn't even get through them all. The, the three characters that I'm not using, I leveled up their main role. And I got to their second main role when I ran out of the Crystarium, when I ran out of Crystogen points. So yeah, that's a lot of leveling up to do. And even with all the grinding I did, it was still not enough to fill up that Crystarium. 
And once again, after backtracking for no reason, uh, we make it to a fight that is somewhat interesting. So you might have noticed that my voice changed a bit. I took a bit of a break. And I don't know why, my voice does some weird things sometimes. It could be like the deepest thing in the world. And at other times, I'll be voice cracking left and right, and I don't understand it. And this mic picks it up so well. And I do need to get a pop filter, I know that. It's... I, my videos pop a lot. And I probably popped when I said the word pop. Anyway. So, these guys are quite annoying and Lightning's almost dead. Thankfully, uh, Thank you. the behemoth doesn't attack very often. So it's just a matter of getting rid of the, these guys. But yeah, I took a break because I was just getting so annoyed with the area. Like I, As you can tell from the way I was backtracking, I, I was hoping to find an item, but there, there never is in those areas and I, I just don't want to keep it in my brain. I just keep wanting to explore it because Final Fantasy players generally want to explore and fuck I just missed killing that guy but yeah it's just so annoying because there's so many like ledges and stuff and they lead to absolutely nothing anyways yeah we're making quick work of this guy it's the first time he attacked he transformed Now we got two paths uh, to check the map and choose the dead end first. And I think I remember what it leads to. There's a fight with an item at the end that ends up being pretty useless. But I'm gonna do it anyhow. Alright, so it's another one of these awesome looking things. And this is the first time I think we didn't get a preemptor strike on it. So it does the forge blade thing. Which I don't think you need to kill. You just need to focus on the body. I don't know how much stronger the red ones are, so I'm gonna buff up really quick. And man, that is fast. A few seconds and I'm already almost fully buffed up. Yeah, that vigilance really helps. Because it interrupts everything. It's already staggered. Yeah, so there's that little sword floating around. And it does quite a bit of damage. And, oh man. With the end thunder and the faith and bravery we are making quick work I don't even think it was necessary to buff up as much as I did yeah five stars it's a good fight yeah that's for sure we've been in this area way longer than we needed to so we got a few components for that fight, which I don't even think are that good. I think the perfect conductors are better. And honestly, I wish I took advantage of that. Those Vikings in the previous chapter, it was their common drop. And it is one of the most powerful components in the game. It's another one of these rooms, which I find awesome. Out of this whole chapter, these rooms are the coolest. I wish there was like... 20 of these rooms instead of the uh, garbage train thing that we've been facing and that tower thing that we've been descending. Like, these rooms are cool. And these enemies as well. Like, these guys are right up there with the uh, wyverns and behemoths. Like, they just look so sick.
But even still, with that said, there are no items, despite the two nooks and crannies. Like, I hate nooks and crannies without items in them. And I also hate this fucking area. I probably said it every single time I came in here, didn't I? Well, thankfully this time, it didn't have those stupid ledges that you can climb for no reason. There were, however, four repeat fights. Not worth showing, they we fought them before. More monster bits. I think those ones are pretty powerful. And I'm getting a bit worried. I'm almost 40 minutes in and I haven't even gone close to the area that I wanted to get to. Well, I don't know what the point of the cutscenes were, but it was the same two fights. Just gonna look over the area, and I think this is the end of the fifth arc. Looks like it's a dead end. How about down there? If the stories are right, it's a maze. This place is a boot camp for Lassie. All kinds of challenges from Grand Pulse are waiting. Challenges, huh? To get us all ready to go wipe out Cocoon? We can wait here if Turn and Seath sounds better. I have had enough of this! Where's the way out?! Way out? Who said there was one? Bring it on. My mind is made up. Maybe I will end up a Seath. But until that happens, I'm gonna make Sarah proud. I couldn't bring myself to admit that this tear meant goodbye. That's why I kept searching for her. But I didn't need to. Sarah was here the whole time. Right here. Watching over me. Now I get it. What this tear's been telling me is to not let our focus win. It's not the fallacy we should listen to. It's Sarah and Reigns. Do you know why? Because our focus doesn't matter. What matters to me is that we protect Cocoon. Whatever it takes. Same here. I'll help you do it. All right. I'm in. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, come on. When a chocobo agrees, you know you're on the right path. There you go. <laughs> well, That's right. Count me out. What? Mm -hmm. If you all want to go it on your own, then so will I. Oh, hey, Bang. Hey. Uh -huh. hey. Let Cocoon get what's coming. They hate us for being with C. What's it to me if they die? Better that than watch a friend go see. If you don't have the nerve for it, I'll do it myself. Go on alone. Get stronger. And smash Cocoon out of the sky! Oh, back. Uh, you turn Seath and there's no coming back! I'm not... Uh, letting it end that way!
you doing here? <sighs> Come to take pity on me? Come to take care of a broken Lucy? That thing's here to help us? Yeah, help. That's what Eidolans do. They help us. Eidolans are our salvation. If we can't decide what to do next, they come put us out of our misery! Wait, so you haven't made up your mind yet? <clears throat> Why are you protecting me? What are you doing? Protecting one of our own. We can do without their brand of mercy. And we don't need a Falsy's orders either. I'm fighting this focus to the end. We all are. So please, fight with us. I mentioned before that I didn't like Fang too much and this was one of the scenes that made me think that anyway her Eidolon is Bahamut and honestly kind of underwhelming looking. Bahamut usually looks fucking sick in Final Fantasy games but in terms of Eidolon fights this is the hardest one because you get your party changed and he is a pain in the ass. I never actually defeated him on the first go. I had to restart and change the party team or party team what the fuck am I talking about uh, paradigms oh fuck I knew it you stupid oversized cat alright trying this again with uh, the right paradigms I basically chose the same ones I've been using with the other team and the league is not there anymore yeah, he does a lot of damage. Like, look at that. So even Dodds is pretty good uh, to get buffed up. And damn, man, he attacks a lot. He seems to be susceptible to curse. Wow, it's actually going up really fast. It's probably the saboteur roll. It's almost like halfway there already. I guess keep going. I'm pretty high leveled. I'm surprised I didn't do this the first time. Look up. I'm almost done the fight already. What the hell? Yeah. Oh fuck, I'm an idiot. I wonder how long it was there. That was like a minute and a half. Yeah, that's a little more like it. This transformation is a lot cooler than what we were just fighting. But yeah, I wonder how long the Gestalt mode was just sitting there. That's probably a good 10 seconds. Look! A new path! Maybe that thing did save us! I don't suppose you'd be willing to call it a sign of me being right. No? Right. Okay. Listen, keep our eyes on the goal and we'll figure something out. All right. Hey, Sarah. So I guess being a Lassie doesn't have to mean you can't do what's right, does it? Ship? And it's from Grand Pulse. 
I guess it was one of this Ark's weapons or something. That's a gate to Grand Pulse. Right. Hmm. So what? That's our exit? Pulse or bust? Could be one of Dysley's traps. Well, that's not good. Do you think it might take us to Eden? Mm-mm. I'm doing the flying. No more of these ships taking charge of our travel plan stuff. The only place this thing has taken us is where these boys tell it to. <laughs> really? That is a Grand Pulse ship. Really? <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> Either way, we're on borrowed time. So we might as well go. We get lucky, maybe we'll even turn up some way to get rid of these goofy tattoos. Yeah. But there's no way to do that. You never know. Maybe we just didn't think to look for one. If nothing else, we know Cocoon's safe for the time being. I'd say it's worth going to take a look. Maybe. But what about your dad? I made him a promise. I promised him to keep going and do what I had to. He said only I would know what that was. The world's full of lies. There's no way of knowing what's right. All we can do is believe in ourselves. It's easy to sit back and let people trick you. Like how the Sanctum had us all thinking that Elise was some sort of monster. I'm done with their lies. Falci, this whole focus thing. From here on out, I use my eyes. Think. And act. I might not make all the right choices, but as long as I'm the one who decided what to do, there's nothing to regret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's do it. I'm with you. Bad choices and all. <laughs> of course, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. Pulse is hell, you know. Oh, is it now? How many times have you been there? <laughs> None. But I want to go and see what it's like for myself. Okay, people. <laughs> so, everybody in? Right, Absolutely. Yeah. Off to hell we go. No one ever said the future'd be easy. saw the glimmer of a dream somewhere in the sky that night. The tiniest spark of hope that we could change our fate. Who could say? You did not. <laughs> Playful little critter, isn't he? Yeah, we'll play with someone else. <laughs> Happens all the time. He thinks we're lunch. Yeah, like on the seafood buffet. Seafood, cute. Guys, here it comes!
Home sweet home. Welcome to Grand Pulse. A world wild and fragile, vibrant and untamed. Grand Pulse. It's a place where lives are ruled by the brutal struggle for survival and the callous and uncaring whim of the Tarsim. There is no such thing as mercy. Only a never-ending string of trials that weed out the weak and leave only the strong. Reigns knew the truth. The purpose lying at the heart of all the Falsi's actions. Recalling their lost deity and returning the world to its former glory. People were never anything more than sacrifices. And Cocoon's destruction? It's just a way to wake a sleeping god. But would bringing the Maker back into this world really lead to our salvation? The Maker created Falsi, and they, in their desperation to be reunited with the Maker, created Lassi. And Lassi? I wonder what we'll end up creating. future looked bleak, but as long as we could keep our spirits up, we'd find a way to change our fate. Somehow. You were having a dream. <laughs> a pretty strange dream. Have any luck? No sign of anyone else. But we did find plenty of bloodthirsty wildlife and crumbling ruins. Long day? Well, guys, mm -hmm. we've run out of places to search around here. Huh. Where's Hope? He's off with the chocobo, getting supplies. Hello. Hey. <laughs> you all by yourself? <laughs> We gotta find him. Right. 
And one annoying chapter later, we gain our 12th achievement, Instrument of Hope. And funny enough, we attain it when hope is missing. So there are no items back there, including that little hallway up to the right. And we are facing these enemies again. I don't know if they're the same as the ones we fought in the fifth arc, but I don't know, they might be a little tougher. And oh, yeah, they're definitely a little tougher. But as usual, we are over leveled as fuck. And also, those previous cutscenes uh, that we just saw were probably the best cutscenes. And Saz was hilarious the whole fucking time. It was it was a great series of cutscenes. And I know I just said cutscenes a lot, but damn, they're good cutscenes. Like I'd watch those cutscenes again. And also cutscenes. I am gonna watch them twice when I edit the video anyway. And again, we got new flan enemy enemies. Uh, they are susceptible to fire, like most other ones, and resistant to physical attacks, like every other flan in the game. So yeah, we kill them pretty quick. I think they do morph into each other, like the other ones did as well. We never did see it though. But yeah, made quick work. Well, that answered that question. They do morph into each other. And from what I recall, these guys do a lot of damage. Well, not so much. Yeah, not tough at all. This is a nothing fight. Oh my god, that amount of damage though. That's a lot. I don't think launching them is worth it. It does no damage at all and... You're just getting interrupted anyway. Oh, it was so close. I've always wanted to see an enemy get killed by landing. Because it only does like 10 damage. And another weapon, I believe it was for Fang. Hope. So this is how it ends. But just wait. Now, how long has it been since we left Cocoon? Hmm? Not a single soul for miles around. Not a single clue about this whole sea mess. <sighs> what I'm saying is, we did well just getting this far. <sighs> but we could go a little further. Hmm? Meaning? There's still one place. The Neo? Oh. Are you sure? I'm sure. You know, if we don't find anything this time, we won't get another chance. Huh? Erba. Uh, the place it all began. Hope. The place where the pulse of Falci lay dreaming. Vanille and Fang's home. Just maybe. It'll be the place where we find the answers we're looking for. You're right. If we can get there. <sighs> Go ahead without me. We can't just leave you. I'll be fine. You've all taught me so much. You showed me how to fight. 
<laughs> what did I tell you? Leave the fighting to me. I'm scared. We understand. You're not going to go through this ordeal alone, you know. Huh? That's what scares me. I don't... I don't want to see you get hurt because of me. It'd be better for everyone if I just stayed behind. Mention ordeals? And look what comes along! This is not an ordeal. This is a gift. Hope! Huh? This is the kind of power you've got inside. And it's telling you not to give up. Trust me. Huh? Oh, I get it. It's here to show you the way. Show you that you've got what it takes to get back on your feet and do this thing! You mean... that came from me? Ready? And yet again, our team gets changed. So, two Eidolon fights back to back. Uh, we have the hardest one, and arguably the easiest one. It does do a lot of damage, but we have uh, two of the best healers in the game. And Fang obviously has a medic role as well, but I don't think she has it in the paradigms that we have. No, she's a sentinel. Oh, well, Fang's already dead. Thankfully, lightning has a raise. It's so much better using raise than it is uh, a phoenix down. But yeah, this thing uh, attacks pretty hard, but his attacks are few and far between. It's super slow. Yeah, the, the paradigms that they give you when they change your party are just crap. Yeah, this is like super easy as long as you stay healed. Bring it on! You can get unlucky though. because uh, Fang died in the beginning, Hope can easily die in the beginning as well. He tends to stay pretty far back though, so it's unlikely. Yeah, 800 seconds and it's already almost over. Bring it on. Yeah, just a couple more rounds and that'll be that. Oof, so close. One last round. There we go. Here I go! Well, I don't understand where all that material came from. He turned it into a goddamn castle. Some beast you tamed, I tell you that. Yeah, I always thought the Idolans appeared to set us free through death, but now I think maybe they're here to snap us out of our slumps. Oh, like the one you were just in? <laughs> I'll ask for help earlier next time around. 
I told you, on Grand Pulse, we're all family. You can moan all you like, but you're stuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> you're never alone in hell. <laughs> Listen, funny man, don't call this place hell, all right? <laughs> so, we're all decided then. Yeah. Yep. Maybe nothing would change. And maybe we'd hit a dead end. But we were at least going to see where the road would take us. The search for a home buried in the past and the faintest glimmer of hope. Our final journey had just begun. Let's go. This stone, it's... Look familiar? It's a kind of seeth. It's in the last stage. A seeth. Don't worry. It's no threat to anyone anymore. The sea that fail their focus become sea and wander the wilds. Eventually, they lose the will to go on and turn to stone. But still, even in this state, they can't forget the task they once had. And they call out to the sea over and over, complete my focus. So they're doomed to eternal regret, huh? Hey, we should help this one out. I mean, come on, we, we can't just ignore it. Listen, if we fail our focus, it could be us suffering like that. Wow, what a happy thought. That's not like you. But going out of his way to help someone? That's snow all over. And just three items to mark off here, the Feymark, the Partisan, and the Tetratic Crown, which leaves us with 158 items to go. And man, this is exactly the place I was hoping to end. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll reconvene with you later. Toodles.